How did I discover Pakistan? Everyone has asked me this question. Well, in fact, I already knew a little bit about the culture through music, as I have been interested in the Eastern and Middle Eastern cultures since a long time, particularly through Sufism. <laughs> I also knew big names like Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, who is actually famous in Europe. And I also knew some traditional songs like Allahi Allah. I also had a passion and still have for the Persian world um, and I started to learn Farsi and was very interested in the classical and traditional Persian music. For me, Persian classical music is one of the highest. I also bought a DAF from Tehran. Anyway, so I had planned my trip to Iran when a friend of mine sent me a song sung by Abida Parveen. Uh, it was Chambe di Bouti, and that was it. I was hooked. It became my favorite song and I felt deeply attracted. So I cancelled my trip to Iran and decided that I would go to Pakistan instead. I already had friends there who helped me find accommodation and integrate. As you know, I'm not really a tourist, I'm more of an explorer. So I didn't want to only visit uh, to come as a tourist. I wanted to live there and this is what I did. A few months later, I had the chance to find myself in front of Abida Parvin during a concert in Lahore, uh, which was unforgettable. <laughs> When I was a child, I knew that I would be led to use sacred music, spiritual music, first of all for myself, to reconnect to the truth by the way of music, and secondly for others as well. Most people accept that the light belongs by right to science, philosophy, religion, but the arts are still considered only as a matter of opinion or taste. But as my favorite Western composer Beethoven used to say, music is a higher revelation than any wisdom or philosophy. Of course, here it is music in its purest sense, in the most primordial and the closest to the divine there is. So music or organized sound from this perspective, is a way of achieving deepest levels of the self and deepest levels of life. My musical background has been very rich. I have experience in several spiritual music bands. I have learned several instruments. <laughs> trained in harmonic singing by David Hikes. So I was already using music for spiritual purposes. 
But there were a few missing pieces in my puzzle. For instance, I was looking for an ustad to introduce me to classical Hindustani singing. And a few months later, and after several trips to Pakistan, I finally found my ustani. And of course, I intend to continue my journey with her when I will return. It was also in Pakistan that I had the chance to be trained in sound therapy by my very talented friend, Usman Latif, who is actually the pioneer of this discipline in Pakistan. Here we are with Sophia, who has joined us today in our performance. She will be playing our tantra today. So I don't know if you will see something. a consensus in sacred music. It is that sound is prior to the material existence, that above the appearance matter there is a network of vibrations. And if you know how to navigate in this ocean of love, of wisdom, of beauty, then you know how to find your way back to yourself, your true self and back to your creator. Now I use spiritual music, sound therapy, vibrations to help others through the healing properties of sound in order to solve physical, emotional, spiritual issues. And I am engaged in this path of reintroducing people to the ancient and primordial principles so they can live happier, healthier, with more conscience and uh, most of all with their hearts. So it is much more than entertainment. It is much more than therapy even. It is a reconnection to the light. I'm deliberately not mentioning any religious content here mm. because sound therapy is not only um, intended oh, for too. people of only one faith. It is for everyone really. It is universal and it's not supposed to close doors and divide, but to unite and pacify, which is exactly my goal in my exploration of Pakistan, of the East, the West and the world to unite and pacify. <laughs> 